the left artery that supplies blood to your left side of the heart has been clogged 100%. What's up guys, Derek, moreplates18.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about, I almost died by Callie Muscle. So he actually ended up having a heart attack at the exact same age as Sean Roden on the exact same day. And like, what are the fucking chances? He is, if you don't know Callie Muscle, one of the biggest influencers, I guess, in the industry from a sheer follower standpoint and from a physique standpoint, the guy's an absolute monster. And as you would expect, you know, getting into your 40s, maintaining a physique like this, you know, obviously involves some exogenous hormones and is otherwise going to be a bit taxing on your system. And we've been seeing a more prevalent amount of passings recently in the bodybuilding industry, especially among um, big, notable, um, influential individuals. Now, why is that exactly? So we're gonna be talking about increased clotting risk, preventative medicine. We're gonna be talking about a few things. And as far as Cali muscle, we're gonna be talking about the main underlying factor of what actually happened to him. Is it you know the clotting? Is it the this? Is it the lat? What could he have done to prevent this? We'll get into that shortly. Yo, what's up with it, guys? Your boy, man. I had a heart attack. For years, man, I had a problem with uh, edema in my feet and ankles. And, you know, I was younger. I didn't think much of it or whatever. But, you know, uh, people used to tell me that's a sign of heart failure or whatever. I, you know, of course, <clears throat> being a tough ass, you ignore people saying that. Like, man, I ain't got no heart problems or nothing like that. So I went to the dentist on that Wednesday. Went to the dentist, uh, and I didn't go all the way under, but I got anesthesia or whatever. Uh, so I got a, uh, what you call it? I got the uh, implant screw put in. Got a deep, deep clean. And what else? Oh, and a little tooth pulled. So I go home, was fine, took some meds. And uh, oh yeah, that was the same day, huh? Then I went to the dentist? No, he went to the dentist and then the, the same. next day. Oh, the next day, okay. Yeah, but that's nothing to do with it. Yeah. And so, next day I came home, took a Viking in, I think, and chilled out and went to bed. And I got suddenly woke up, uh, uh, my chest pains. And it felt like heartburn. I had heartburn before in my life, so it felt like heartburn. So I went in and rushed in the kitchen and got some, uh, whatever I could for heartburn. So it wouldn't subside, man, for like two hours. And uh, my girl, you know, she was trying to figure out what was going on as well. And after like two hours, she was like, I gotta take you to the hospital. And you know, I didn't uh, object. So we came to the hospital, they ran a test. And I mean, they were swift, man. Uh, we got to get you into surgery. Your uh, main, like main artery or something, clogged up. The left artery that supplies blood to your left side of the heart has been clogged 100%. It was 100%? Yes. 100% clog. So keep that in mind. So yeah. So it was clogged. So like I say, since a kid, I always had a problem with edema in my feet. Kind of ignored it got some physicals and they would whisper some possible medical problems okay so this guy could he have seen way ahead of time that he has significant amounts of plaque buildup yeah he could have how could he have done that imaging did he have that done obviously not this is again something we talk about all the time getting your blood work again and even if you see your blood work like how many bodybuilders are doing something about it when they see their totally fucked up lipid profiles and again, when it comes down to their cholesterol levels, every, you know, most individuals, there are a lot of individuals who are quick to say, it's not just LDL cholesterol, it's not this, you know, plaque buildup, it's, you know, multifactorial. And it is, but how many bodybuilders who are on gear and eating excessive amounts of foods are inflammation free? Like fucking none do. Like this is like plaque buildup city in these individuals. So not taking proactive preventative medicine measures for this shit is just very, very negligent in my opinion. So again, 
When it comes to Cali muscle having a 100% clogged artery and you know, what led to this? Is it, you know, the clotting issues going on with the, you know, what is it the gear? Is it the body mass or is it a combination of everything in unison with the fact that his diet is complete trash? Again, if you are an individual who is walking around into your forties, trying to maintain bodybuilder level size, that's going to be the most stressful thing on your organs overall, in my opinion, even above and beyond the direct stress of being on gear in general, body mass is like a huge predictor of mortality. If you're a giant fucking human, the amount of oxygen, blood, nutrients, everything you need to supply your body, the demands on your body in general are so much fucking higher. You're going to die much quicker. Any individual, how many bodybuilders have you seen that have tried to maintain their size pass away early? These are the individuals that end up, you know, kicking the bucket or whatever the saying is far too early and far too young. You have Nazar El Sambadi, you have a Greg Kovacs, you have so many of these individuals that try to retain their mass pushing into like, you know, late thirties, early, in, like even late thirties, sometimes mid forties, these individuals end up shortening their lifespans very significantly. And it's not necessarily just the gear, it's the sheer body mass. Now, again, though, with a 100% clogged artery, could he have found it earlier? Did this have anything to do with, you know, significant amounts of clotting? Obviously clotting is one of the factors that's a something to be concerned of potentially with the you know what going on. However, again, being proactive about shit, get a D-dimer test when you're getting your biomarkers checked next time your blood work. See if you have increased clotting factors in your body. See if you are at risk. Start having, again, we're gonna get into some of the preventative measures shortly, but again, with Cali muscle, is this just the gear? Is it just the fucking being jacked as hell? Or is it also that this guy has a complete trash lifestyle at the end of the day. If you think that you're going to be free of plaque buildup when you're doing a super inflammatory sport like bodybuilding, that's just like so problematic from so many different aspects. And then you're also posting shit like this. I ate one of everything at Arby's, one of everything, bro. And yeah, you can maintain a good lean body composition that looks great when you have this much muscle, even eating like ridiculous amounts of food, because that's like what it takes to fuel the machine but it's not going to be good for your heart. I eat every food at Panda Express. Like this guy does ASMR like fucking mukbangs, eating like trash. Wendy's eating one of everything, mukbang. ASMR, Burger King, Whopper Burger, French fries, milkshake, keep it real meals. ASMR mukbang, Domino's pizza plus stuffy stuffed cheese bread, chocolate lava cakes, delicious chicken. Chicks, churches, fried chicken, gravy, fried okra, lemon pie, mukbang. So yeah, like eating like this, even if you are not on gear and you're totally natural, guys who are obese are going to be dying in their 40s and 50s eating like this all the time too. So if you compound this on top of gear, on top of being way too large, on top of all of the different factors, yeah, like this is not, having a 100% clogged artery is a totally preventative thing by not eating like this, by not having a highly inflammatory lifestyle and eating like fucking garbage at the end of the day. Like this was unfortunately something that could have been totally like it's for, I don't, I don't know. Is it fortunate or unfortunate? Like it's an educational moment that I think people need to realize just because you're in your forties, like the age does not make you immune to the factors of like the gear, the fucking lifestyle, the body weight, the bad food choices. Like they're all going to compound and with Cali muscle. Like he had so many different things layered on top of one another that were like beyond suboptimal. Like it's one thing if you're having a super clean, super perfect diet and lifestyle, and then you're also using gear and you're trying to be a large body weight, that in itself will fucking kill you at like, you know, 40 to 50 potentially if you're trying to stay massive as hell. It's entirely possible. With him though, adding this into the equation, like having a clogged artery at that age with everything else included, all the other factors accounted for, Honestly, not very surprising if you're not doing anything about it. And the fact that he's discovering it now shows that there was no proactive imaging done whatsoever to try and get ahead of it. And if he did notice it ahead of time and you had you know, noticed it when it was fucking 50% or whatever, like, do you think he would have been posting these videos as recently as fucking 2021? Like, obviously not. He had no idea this was coming and just hit him like a fucking truck. And this was not something that was caused by... You know, this is like a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. It had, it wasn't the result of the fucking, you know what, or, you know, the gear and everything obviously compounds on top with the inflammation, the whole sheer body stress in general. But again, 
Like there are fat guys who are dying too, doing this exact same type of stuff. It doesn't just have to do with the gear and the fucking being jacked or the you know what. So for him, again, this is like something we deal with at our clinic too all the time. We see individuals coming in with like actual, you know, a clinical need for intervention, for example, with familial hypercholesterolemia or individuals who have lifestyle factors that should be changed or individuals who are like some people can attenuate it naturally by actually getting, you know, getting their diet in line, getting their lifestyle in line. But some individuals who are exposing themselves to the pharmacology of bodybuilding, having ridiculous body masses, these individuals have such skewed lipid profiles that sometimes are like pretty fucking unmanageable via natural intervention sometimes, maybe they need pharmacology. Like I've seen individuals slash their cholesterol levels in half, slash their LDLs in half, slash their triglycerides in half, improve their HDLs by intervening with things when necessary, like, you know, a PCSK9 inhibitor, a statin, a zetamide. These are things that are heavily overlooked and frankly, most bodybuilders just don't use entirely because they think it's going to fuck with their muscle growth or their gains or whatever. It's like you're using grams of fucking exogenous hormones and then you're worried about what's going to happen with a like small dose of a statin and a zetamide. Like, bro, this is what's going to prevent you from getting a fucking clogged artery at 46 years old as well as not, it doesn't exempt you from eating like this though. Again, this is a large reason why he's where he's at as well as all the other factors mentioned. But again, a lot of people, you would find this out ahead of time if you're proactive about not just blood work, but organ imaging, getting high quality medical oversight. Again, this is shit that is happening because people just aren't taking their health seriously when they're doing stuff that's highly risky at the end of the day. So again, some other things, like when we're talking about the clotting factors and whatnot, I still think that maybe it might've expedited things. And yeah, I'm acknowledging that there definitely is something fucking going on with uh like we've seen the clotting issues when it comes to the uh the pandemic and whatnot and that's definitely something to take into account and be mindful of and hence why like even personally um the reduce it trial showed you know re very very substantial improvements in um overall like mortality metrics when you use i believe it was four grams of epa per day so for me i use a very very high dose of a highly concentrated um, omega-3 supplement personally to keep my blood thinner. Um, as far as aspirin goes, a baby aspirin, is that something you should be doing? Like again, if you're a bodybuilder, again, if you want to be proactive about shit, like actually check your clotting factor, um, biomarkers in your blood work and see where it's at. If you have no idea and you're worried, like fucking check it out. If you want to see if you have any development of plaque, like go check it out, get imaging done. Don't just like take shots in the dark worrying and address it properly. Be proactive about this stuff. Like again, even like overlooking basic things like blood pressure modulation, overlook sleep apnea, shit like this that bodybuilders are so prone to and go, like some people don't even address that. And that's like very, very basic shit. Um, it's so like, it's no brainer stuff. Like you shouldn't even be in this lifestyle if that's not something you're looking at. Like day one, if you're gonna be exposing yourself to exogenous androgens, or just being a giant large human. Like these are factors that are going to crop up almost like undoubtedly in many scenarios, like just by sheer like mass of your fucking neck, for example, um, the amount of weight and stress on your organ systems, it's all problematic. And the amount of food that you have to ingest too, it's not something you're going to have zero fucking inflammation from. It's not something you can necessarily just have a, you know, like maybe you're one of the, you know, hyper elite individuals from a genetic aspect and you have certain, you know, protective polymorphisms and whatnot. But most people who are in this lifestyle are following a fairly inflammatory and problematic lifestyle that will probably need something like an ARB, something like an azetamide, something like potentially a beta blocker in some cases, as well as proactive imaging, regular fucking blood work, a high quality doctor in your camp who actually understands what you're exposing yourself to and how to attenuate the risks. And again, when it comes to the clotting and whatnot, like get your fucking D-dimer checked. Leo um, from Leo on Longevity, friend of the channel, been on um, you know the Super Physiological Man podcast. You've probably seen him many times at this point. He made a very, very um, good post too recently. And this is something I've been discussing with him, you know, discussing, you know, clotting risk and whatnot. Um, he had discussed if this was actually an issue for somebody looking at an actual efficacious medicine designed for this, not trying to, you know, use a fucking random over the counter supplement. I'm not saying again, omega three multi multi-purpose in terms of its effects, very, very useful, no brainer addition. And as a side fringe benefit, keeps your blood a bit thinner. 
You know, a baby aspirin, is that something you're gonna be on for life? I don't know necessarily. That's something I don't necessarily want to expose my GI to long-term, although it does seem to be um, potentially protective in a you know blood thinning aspect, a cardiovascular disease, proactive management aspect to some extent, and maybe it would be prudent to do something like that, but that's something you should talk with with your doctor. But again, Leo put up a post with the recent deaths and people's obsession with blood clots, I noticed a lot of people suggesting aspirin use for bodybuilders. If a bodybuilder did have a serious clotting issue, aspirin would likely be insufficient. Yeah, so if you think an 81 milligram baby aspirin is going to protect you from a fucking blood clot, highly unlikely. Instead, consider asking your doctor about low molecular weight heparins like Pfizer's Fregman taken by subcutaneous injection and monitor D-dimer on blood tests. So again, instead of wondering what's going on, like fucking check, do you have clotting going on right now? Is it in above the reference range? Is there something that looks problematic? L like check it out, dude. Don't wait until you have a hundred percent blockage and then have a fucking heart attack and then try and look back and see like where you went wrong. Um, and he mentions a medicine here called Daltepirin sodium, low molecular weight heparin marketed as Fragmin. Something to potentially bring up with your doctor if you were actually very, very concerned about the clotting issue. So again, like actually taking a real fucking measured practical approach to this shit, using protective medicine when warranted, why bodybuilders aren't using things like Telmisartan regularly, why individuals aren't using things like Azetamide when they have totally fucking skewed lipid profiles, when they're eating like fucking this bro, like what, like it's a no brainer. So for me, um, this is just another um, case of accumulation of risk over time. Like he's 46 and I, that seems very young and it is very young, but ultimately is it, you know, the bodybuilding lifestyle? It's also the fact that he's just fucking a massive human who eats a shit ton of bad food. Look at the metrics of obese people dying. It's not like totally wild to think that a guy's going to die in his forties or fifties when he eats like, like badly and also weighs a ridiculous amount, you know? And his lipid profile is completely fucked. And he's totally ridden with inflammation on a regular basis. And he has gear on top of that. Maybe he has sleep apnea dude that's unaddressed. Maybe he has chronically high blood pressure. All of these things, it seems like, I'm not saying he was totally negligent, but I mean, again, like this is a, fortunately for him, like he has another chance and this is a wake up call, but I think he's going to need to significantly downsize. I think this is one of those things, again, where unfortunately certain individuals, it almost seems like, they become a ticking time bomb when the first one happens where it's like, okay, like thankfully they made it through and hopefully they fix their lifestyle and, you know, they get better. And then it seems just like, you know, a year later, you know, it actually happens. Like for him, he's going to have to take significant measures in my opinion to attenuate his risk entirely, or, you know, at least give him a better chance of making it and having a reasonably, you know, long, high quality life. I think he's going to need to downsize it very significantly. I think he's gonna have to stop doing shit like this. I think he's going to have to start looking at some of these medications. I think he's going to have to start being very, very, very on point with his imaging as well as his blood work and um, take it fucking seriously. Cause to date, you know, a lot of people haven't. And I think this, again, a lot of these situations are fucking scary to see, but it's a wake up call for people. Like having giant mega influencers who are, you know, the epitomes of, you know, muscularity and, you know, living the sick lifestyle. You can't get away with it long-term. Like 46 is young as fuck, dude. But again, this is not an issue that just happened because like randomly, this has been fucking years of accrual of risk building up over his 20s and 30s, living this lifestyle long-term. This is not something that just happened because he eats like this now and because he takes gear now and the occurrence of the pandemic now. It's a a cumulative issue over fucking decades. Like getting a 100% blocked artery is not something that happens quickly. That is a very, very long-term issue. So again, be mindful of this stuff, guys. Be pre preventative. Like don't wait, you know? Go get it checked out. Get your an elaborate blood panel and actually check biomarkers that give you more insight, you know? Get your C-reactive protein. See where your fucking inflammation's at. Get your D-dimer checked. See if you have any clotting that is concerning. Get imaging done. See where you're at with your, you know, plaque atherosclerosis development. Do you have any? Do you have a fucking enlarged heart? Do you have any issues that you should be worried about? Do you have left ventricular hypertrophy? What's your blood pressure like? Do you have chronic sleep apnea that's unaddressed? Get this shit checked, guys. Again, like I'm not, I'm not surprised, you know, unfortunately. Like people are like, what's going on in the bodybuilding world? Like it's fucking everything, dude. It's the same thing that's been going on plus a little bit more, you know? Maybe the clotting shit is pushing things over the edge a little bit for some individuals, but I mean, they were well on their way already. So 
Be, take it fucking seriously. Look at some of these medications. Talk with it with your doctor. Fix your diets. Fix your lifestyles. Um, and if you want to avoid risk entirely, then ultimately, don't use any bodybuilding drugs whatsoever. Body weights, keep them more reasonable. You know, like no one needs to walk around at like 270 fucking pounds of muscle. Be pre preventative and proactive about your um, assessing your biomarkers and actually looking at organ health, um, blood flow, actually see if there's any blockages developing. Um, like all the things I mentioned are just things that should be no brainers for guys who do this for a living and are like professionals. Like Cali Muscle's not a pro bodybuilder, but like he might as well be, you know what I mean? So um, anyways, that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you haven't seen my videos on the most protective drugs for bodybuilders or, you know, uh, my number one, I don't know, recommended ancillaries for bodybuilders video, do that. But, um, and if you want to get high quality medical oversight, check out Merrick Health, linked in the description below. Again, we see totally wrecked lipid profiles on a regular basis, highly inflammatory individuals, and we will work with you to fix that stuff. And we actually understand how these medications work with, work with angiotensin receptor blockade, with inhibiting cholesterol synthesis when warranted. Um, again, these are not things that necessarily are good for you, but unfortunately, some people impose these situations upon themselves where looking to pharmacology to attenuate the risk is warranted. But ultimately, the number one solution is to avoid all this shit entirely, obviously. You know, keep the stress off your organs, keep your body weight light, be lean and athletic and natural and eat clean food and lead a low inflammation lifestyle, follow a high quality circadian rhythm, all that kind of shit. But, you know, obviously individuals are still going to do the bodybuilding thing. And, um, you know, you gotta do what you fucking can to mitigate your risk. And especially, you know, with the you know what going on, if there's clotting issues, you know, maybe you need to be even more mindful of it, you know, pull things back even more. Um, ultimately, it's an individual decision. Everyone weighs out the risks to reward on this stuff, obviously. Um, and you do what you can, but I just think people need to be more educated about what they should be doing if they're going to be, you know, doing shit like this, walking around at 250 plus pounds, using gear in general, um, like individuals who don't have, you know, basic pharmacology in place when they're also on copious amounts of pharmacology for muscle building, but then have nothing in place for managing their lipid profile, have nothing in place for managing blood pressure, for managing LVH, for managing all of these things that direct androgenic signaling, psychoactive activity on the brain, um, all that kind of shit that could be problematic down the line and lead to, you know, an accruement of issues that leads to it rearing its ugly head at 46. So anyways, that's it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. Much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. Morepleasebrenades.com. Follow me on Instagram, at morepleasebrenades, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. I hope Cali Muscle makes it through and I hope he makes a drastic shift in his lifestyle, cause um, like honestly, I think this could have, this is preventative, dude. This could have been prevented had he been more mindful of many of these factors. So anyways, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.